Yeah. Um, I think that was all the questions in a way. <coughs> all right. Do you want me to chime in on your front Sure. Yeah. Brian, you indicated you had some motions in direct respect to the report we've just heard. Um, uh, Donald? Yeah. I, I do have one question for Andrew. You mentioned that Ghostbusters will be coming back. And uh, do you have any assessments? I call them Ghostbusters. <laughs> Maybe maybe we need them. <laughs> That's a concept. <laughs> Get rid of all the old ghosts here. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Do you have any sense of how you think they're doing so far? We're going to talk about this. We're going to have a discussion. Okay. Okay. Just, yeah, let's wait. Okay. okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. Okay, uh, Brian, you indicated you had a motion with respect to the report we just heard. My motion is as follows. The KPFA Local Station Board opposes any move by Pacifica to remove or replace a KPFA manager without the meaningful participation of KPFA's elected local station board and consultation with KPFA's paid and unpaid staff. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any debate? I'd like to motivate it if I could. Please go ahead. And then I see Tracy. Um, I'm frankly flabbergasted to hear that our manager was just fired over the phone. I sit on the national board. We had a meeting the night before this happened. Not a peep that this might even be under consideration. There's been nothing brought to this local station board. This local station board has already had its good faith attempt to conduct the hire of a permanent general manager blocked by Pacifica in violation of Pacifica's bylaws. And now we have an interim executive director who's been around for less time than our current general manager apparently wants to put a hand-picked person in charge of KPFA without so much as consulting anybody who works there. I think it's a fundamental issue of local control. I think it's a question of whether this board has any relevancy at all. We've been elected by KPFA staff and listeners. One of the most important tasks we're given with under Pacifica's bylaws is participating in the process of hiring managers and participating on an equal level with the executive director in the decision to fire them if that's necessary. I think we have to take a strong position that this is not cool? I've been instructed that Jory is requested the floor, so Tracy, then Jory. Tracy, oh. you have the floor. Jory, did you? Oh. Um, the bylaws are actually pretty clear about the way that the LSB inputs into hiring processes, and there's a couple of very specific ways. One is that we do an evaluation of an interim or a permanent general manager and then we issue a recommendation as a result of that evaluation. What this board did in the spring of 2012, and it did evaluate Mr. Phillips, and the recommendation that this board passed was a resolution of no confidence in the performance of the manager. In addition, this LSB did convene a search committee to go through a permanent hire process, and uh, this board did not um, include Mr. Phillips amongst the uh, preferred candidates and place his name into the final hiring pool. So what I think, um, you know, needs to be said is that this board has weighed in several times in terms of providing input in the way that the bylaws um, permit and has made its feelings somewhat, somewhat clear. Uh, would you pass the microphone to George, please? Uh, first of all, I want to just thank you, Andrew, for being here with us and part of us. I know how difficult it is. <laughs> I agree with Brian. Um, although I may not agree with everything that goes on or has gone on under Andrew's leadership, I believe that he's given honest effort. I believe there should be due process. 
I believe the same complaint I made about the hiring process that we were talking about earlier for the subscription assistant job was faulty, and this process of getting rid of the interim general manager was faulty. And may, Andrew may not be aware of um, the process and the difficulties with, that I saw with that hire process, but we'll talk about that another time. In this case, in this instance, I don't believe that we should throw people away. And we have a manager who's been here two years, he knows a lot, he has some experience, things have gone back and forth. You must take credit for voting no confidence in 2012 when he wasn't on your side. Now I believe he's on your side and now you want to keep him. But that's another issue too, that's just my own personal opinion. However, we are not being fair. This is not fair. You do not hire, fire someone. And the biggest unfairness is this internal interim position. Thank you. Internal interim. This is why we can't have a foundation. This is why we can't get anything done. So um, with this motion, I think it'd be very strong. I want a voice of support for Andrew still. Um, as I said, even though I think we need some work to be done, but I think the potential is there and um, I'm in favor of it. Let me just run through the people who have asked me. Heard Donald, Margie, David, Mark, and Frank. Margie, you have the floor. I'm sorry, Donald, you have the floor. Good try. <laughs> Thank you, Joy. I'm with you. I think this is not only a violation of our processes, uh, this is no way to run an organization. Uh, this is the clearest example I can think of of the utter dysfunctionality of Pacifica at the highest level um, by a person whose background and organizational experience I have no idea about. Uh, I think her experience comes from being, am I wrong, a Scientologist? Or, no, no. no, I got that wrong. Oh, she wasn't? She wasn't, it? She wasn't one of them. Okay, Let's cool. Not go Let's not go there. All right. <laughs> um, this is the second corporate coup against KPFA's managers. The last time was Lem Lem. That was a person of color. We might just point out to folks here, for better or for worse, however you want to interpret it. Um, but what we're, what we're seeing here is a repeat of Pacifica's saying they're running the show and we're just pawns in the game. Yeah. And Ms. Rosenberg's defense of this decision by citing, quote, no confidence a year ago is lame at best. Um, I find this so destructive to the efforts to bring this station moving forward that I'm speechless um, and I will do everything I can to fight this individually. I will start to put this out all across the internet in the ways that I can. This is disgusting and behind the back, undemocratic and dysfunctional and serves no useful purpose. And you can cry allegations of racism and, and he's guilty until proven innocent? Give me a break. Now it's Margie's turn. That's it, Margie passes. Okay, it is David's turn. I'd like to I'll pass for now. David passes, it is Mark's turn. <laughs> Somewhat to reiterate, a um, year ago was a completely different board. And as an observer, not on the board at the time, I agreed with the assessment that I had no confidence in Andrew's abilities. However, in the year's time, he has taken actions, has brought him around, and the discussions that I've had with other people as well. Who's that? That. That's not enough. We'll talk into it then. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the net result here is that, given the no confidence rule of a year ago, um, I think the same board would be hard pressed to vote the same way a year later, showing that there is room for improvement at any level. 
<laughs> the fact that we have a now gone ED replaced by a might as well be gone ED making judgments and assessments based on a year ago without any incident or any uh, reliance on any information in that year makes for very bad management decisions in the first place. Makes me question the ED's competency, which again is something we should be able to do as a board to evaluate and take a look as well. The problem here, however, again, is that this reminds me of the um, Saturday Night Massacre. Is that just keep going down the list? You'll find somebody who's willing to pull the trigger for the boss. What? Why are we getting rid of Andrew? Oh, because he's racist. Well, I don't think that he's done any of these actions. Uh, the ultimate point of this all is, is sins, of not his, sins that are not of his own creation are being laid at his feet, and he's being made to sacrifice for them. And that is wrong. This is the job that we should be doing as the LSB, and we had our, our legs cut out from underneath us. This is being done without our consent, yeah. without our knowledge, without our involvement. Um, we need to vote this resolution in very much. Thank you, Frank. All right, I want to support Andrew still. You know, I told you that all the, through the whole time that all this craziness was going on. Uh, at the last meeting, I kind of fought kind of hard to support, you know, a decision. I feel like we voted on a non-decision. I felt like we could have came to agreements there, maybe that would have helped, you know. If we could have voted on a decision. Um, I asked you to maybe have a meeting of black programmers. I don't know if you ever did that. I think that might have helped. That was coming up on a month ago that I had done that, maybe even longer. I'm not counting the days, but I suggested, why don't you have a meeting of the black programmers, people that have issues. These are some of the proactive things that I would want you to do as a manager. I want to support you, like I told you. Uh, you were one that listened to most of the apprenticeship program, gave us feedback, taught a couple classes. Out of all the managers that have been there, you were the one that's been closest to me, I guess, in the apprenticeship program. And I wouldn't want that to end. I don't know about um, how you feel about Tracy just stating the bylaws, you know. Those are facts. That's what happened. You know, Andrew was not... I was voted to no competence before by some of the people that were here. Maybe not all of them. It was a different board. It's not completely different. You know, and he made some moves during his time to reach out to other sides. And so I'm, I was asking you to reach out back the same way. You know, people might say you went to the dark side or whatever the joke is around the station or whatever the hell it's gone. But I would ask you to come back a little, you know, to come back to the middle some, you know. You got to... Um, if you reach, there's more than two sides really at the KPFA. You reach out to one, to another. You gotta like, I feel, reach out to the, those, make those proactive decisions to take care of some of these things. I wanna um, support you too, but I would wanna know that uh, you would take some proactive measures there, you know? Like I said about my call last time, to have like a vote on a decision, not a non decision. You know, I think we all want Andrew to have control, but we weren't voting on any control, we're just voting on saying something. Um, so I would hope that what would you do to get back, you know, to to stay? Are you going to call this meeting of people that have issues, black programmers, or now that they have this HR person, is it just going to be HR all the time, you know? We need to um, take a proactive step, make, you know, make these meetings. Um, you said something about guilty till proven innocent. JR, I don't know if he's been proven guilty, but he's serving his punishment. And I believe this guy, I don't know his name yet, in the orange shirt, he said some of the same thing. that. He's being uh, he's being blamed for some problems laid at his feet that weren't of his doing, and I know Jr. His um, his issues are more than just what he said on the air, but some of those issues you know were not of his making either that he brought up. So I think we really need to look at that how it goes all around the room, whether it's Jr. or general manager. But I will be in support of keeping Andrew, and I hope that. Uh, we do something proactive to keep him on and not just let him slip away like he's already gone. I, there are three more people on the list and I would urge the microphone, on. please. <laughs> there are three more people on the list and I would urge people that if points have already been made by somebody that we pass on, we've got a lot of business to do today. 
Of the people on the list, the Barber, Tracy for her second in this debate, and then David. David is not on the list anymore. I, I just want to address one thing that Joy said. I basically agree with you. But my vision of uh, why there was a no confidence vote uh, was not that Andrew was on the other side and now he's changed sides. My vision is that when he first came, it was very clear that he was being absolutely directed by the ED and the CFO who were then in office. And as he worked with everyone in the station, he began to find out what the reality was and then began to act on behalf of the staff and um, supporting KPFA's existence. That's the way I would like to talk about that change. Sure, Okay, um, three things, pretty fast. The first is um, the OSB did go through a hiring process because, of course, we don't want interim management to go on forever, and this board convened a hiring committee. Uh, the current board majority was the majority of that committee, and if that committee had uh, been able to come to consensus with the executive director on a candidate, which it was not able to do, um, Mr. Phillips' tenure would have ended well over a year ago, um, about a year ago, give or take. So in many ways, if in fact... I have a uh, point of Brian, order. Brian, excuse me. Am I correct that the board's hiring decisions were made in closed session? Uh, excuse me, please don't interrupt, Burton. You can take the point of order when I'm done speaking. I'm sorry, a point of order takes precedent immediately. Yep. Um, um, and I wasn't here at that time, so I cannot answer the question. Uh, the answer is yes, the, the decisions were made in closed session. Then I believe Ms. Rosenberg is engaged in a breach of confidentiality, potentially creating liability for the station uh, during a volatile I, situation. This statement was printed on the Safe KPFA website quite a while ago. I'll pull it up and show it to you. Brian. I would ask the chair to rule on her actions. Uh, the information yes, sir, was disclosed into the, the public door. domain quite a while ago. Excuse me, I have the floor. Mm -hmm. I have been informed that the information being discussed mm -hmm. was done in closed session. Is that a correct statement? Yes. No. I understand Let me that. Ask uh, the Pacifica National Board Personnel Committee discussed the matter on the stream well over a year ago. Open. The information was disclosed a long time Tracy, ago. Tracy, wait till you're Excuse recognized, you please. Mm -hmm. you I was recognized. You, I, I have the floor. Mm -hmm. I have a question. No, I'm trying to make a ruling on a point of order, and I need you. All right, well, I can withdraw that you point need, and continue. You or, need to uh, help me. The, the ruling, I think, needs to be made for the record mm -hmm. that. If something, it is my view that if something is done in executive session, if somebody other than that authority spills the beans, it does not give license to other people to spill the beans. That's not actually true. Okay. But I understand you're ready to move on. Move on. Okay. Um, some of the language that we're using is a bit strange with corporate coups and so on. Uh, in the case of Lem Lem Riccio, in fact, the duly elected KPFA LSB did weigh in on that proceeding. Um, and in fact, the then executive director acted on the recommendation of the LSB, which is appropriate when you're talking about a permanent hire. So there's no parallel for the two situations whatsoever. Um, I also think we should be careful about language regarding race and racism. Excuse me. Um, I do not believe that in any way, shape, or form anyone is making accusations about who is and who isn't a racist. What I'm aware of is that there are issues regarding the handling of complaints of racial discrimination and other forms of discrimination at the station. And as we know, we have a long and tangled history of 
A, receiving many of these complaints, and B, not, um, not being, uh, not being considered to have handled many of these discrimination complaints well over the years, and have been, you know, a situation where we are in this position quite frequently. So it is, of course, a primary concern of the individuals who have fiduciary responsibility for this foundation that um, our claims handling process improve significantly. So I just want to be clear that some of the language that we're using is inflammatory and fundamentally inaccurate. Mm -hmm. Okay. There is no one else on the list. I am ready to call the vote. It is, in my view, appropriately a roll call vote. Um, no, please, no, no. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Um, I, well, I mean, this is a difficult situation. I know Andrew came on board and things were very difficult. And I have to say, I want to start off by saying that um, I, find, I find you a much superior choice compared to the person who preceded you in terms of understanding of radio, in terms of your uh, willingness to work hard, actually, yeah. and making yourself accessible to the staff. So the fact that I, I hear you during the fund drive going on air and actually pitching and helping people raise money on air is, is to me, is refreshing you know, compared to what we had before. So I really appreciate all these efforts on your part, your diligence, your willing to, um, you know, have an open door policy to the staff and so forth and so on. I don't know the details of this. I mean, unfortunately, this, I'm going to be honest, this motion puts me in an awkward position because I don't really know what the details are. And I think that's what, in a sense, that's the merit of this motion, is saying that you have to have a consultation with this with the, uh, board. Um, so I wish I had a little more information to make a better decision, a more intelligent decision in terms of, uh, because I don't exactly know, I mean, was it something that was uh, cooking, you know, until it actually reached the pressure, you know, point that it was a, you know, couldn't be contained. I mean, it was something, for instance, had to do with, uh, I mean, I could see personal issues could become, they could be of that nature. I mean, if there's a gross violation on part of somebody, personal issues could, um, could be really detrimental if they're not handled carefully. And um, they could actually be quite detrimental to the well-being of the station and the foundation. So I don't know the details. I don't know what exactly going on. But I can tell you this, Andrew, it's, um, and I can tell the board about this, it's, it's going to be very difficult to find a manager who can handle this volatile situation at this stage. And I want to make that, in, in all honesty, it's going to be very difficult. So in a sense, what I'm trying to say, um, Andrew may, may have, and I think Andrew was put in a position that was, you know, sort of a no-win situation. It has to, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll finish, yes. Um, so in a, in a sense, I'm not sure who else could contain these issues. I mean, it's, 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 it's very difficult to resolve them rather than contain them. I don't think containing them is good enough. So anyways, um, I want to also suggest that uh, uh, can I, uh, after this, I guess I may want to um, propose an amendment to the motion. Is that maybe afterwards? Yes. Right. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah. Strictly speaking, as I understand it, you can't speak and then, and then make a motion. And forgive me for that. But you can make it twice. But you can make another motion after we vote on this. Yeah. All okay. right. I am on the threshold of calling a roll call vote. Vote. Oh, All right. Wait a minute. Hold it a second. Let me point of order. I think we've spoken the process twice. Thing, if, we're, if we allow each individual to speak twice on the matter prior to a vote, then if there is an amendment to this motion that Sharon wants to make, he can use his second opportunity to speak prior to a vote 
to make that amendment before we vote on the original motion, if he wants to. If he wants to, but what I understood from him, because I thought I was listening to him, is that he will make his motion after this motion is processed. Oh, no, I meant to amend this motion. Okay. I thought I should say is this a point of order or a debate? An inquiry. <laughs> I, 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 I would like to have the, the, the original motion read again before yes. Sharon Thank makes you. an That's amendment. Okay. Okay. The KPFA Local Station Board opposes any move by Pacifica to remove or replace a KPFA manager without the meaningful participation of KPFA's elected local station board and consultation with KPFA's paid and unpaid staff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm proposing that the, the word consultation be used uh, in lieu of participation in the uh, first part of the motion. In other words, it would be consultation with the board and the staff. Are you moving to strike participation or add? Oh no, uh, I'm, I'm proposing to strike participation and for it to be replaced by the word consultation. Okay, okay we will take the amendment first. Can I, can I say why I'm... Yeah. yeah, I just... Give me a chance, folks. Um, you can motivate your motion and then we have debate on the amendment. So I see your hand. I, I may be mistaken, but the word participation to me in my uh, lexicon means that you actually have a, in a position to affect the decision-making process through some sort of a um, power relations that is not asymmetrical. In other words, you are, you are at the same level with your executive director to make a decision, right? Participation is a collective decision-making process. I mean, uh, and you have probably as much say as the... You know, so I'm not sure if that's the case um, based on our bylaws. The word consultation is, is actually, um, uh, consultation is definitely needed because of what I just mentioned earlier. So that's my understanding and that's what I'm proposing. So. Uh, my understanding, and I'm not asserting this as truth, this is my understanding, is that actually the board in the bylaws has the right to participate, um, not to just consult. Consult is less powerful, less peer, and so I think that would under, that to agree to your amendment would undercut our own authority that we already have. Uh, Mark, Mark, I'm checking it, it is in, okay, um, this is Article 7 if I understand it, Section 3, paragraph, D, subsection D, both the executive director and or an LSB may initiate the process to fire a general manager. However, to effectuate it, both the executive director and the LSB must agree to fire said general manager. If the executive director and the LSB cannot agree, the decision to terminate or retain said general manager shall be made by the board of directors. And my understanding of that reference is the board of directors of Pacifica. Um, I see Janet's hand. Right, Margie. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. It's okay. Point of order. Uh, Sorry, I'm sorry. Who seconded the, mo the uh, motion to amend? Thank you. Was there a second to the... Second. There is a second. There was no second at the time, however? No. There was no second at the time. Then if the breaker of the motion was to draw, then there would be no motion, and this would be moved. Um, let me ask, from the chair, in light of the provision in the bylaws, um, is your, would you like your motion still to be considered? Yes. Is there a second to the motion? Second, yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, the order is Margie, Brian, Janet, and Tracy. 
Uh, I just want to say that I believe that the we have, as an LSB, we have very few rights and responsibilities, and one of them is to effectively engage in the hiring and the firing of a GM. And um, so I don't want to give that up. Uh, I don't want to reduce our participation to consultation, and so I'm opposed to the amendment. Right. Pass. Pass. Janet. Get one to Janet, please. Sorry. I, I believe the uh, clause, or whatever it's called that you quoted, refers to general manager. And what we're, the situation here is an interim general manager. And uh, I, I don't think that this applies that, to that. And uh, on the other hand, I think that the bylaws uh, need some changes and improvements, but they are what they are right now. In any case, it's you know it's interim general management. Yeah, the bylaws apply to permanent general managers or permanent program directors who are hired by search processes, put into LSB pools, and then selected. Um, it does not apply to interims. It hasn't for a decade. Uh, Len Len Regio, for example, was an interim uh, appointed directly by an executive director, Greg Guma. Jim Bennett was in the same position several times. Um, in well, that's that's the way it is. In court. Uh, please don't interrupt. Um, and LSB weighs in. Um, I mean, one thing to say is that permanent general managers and permanent program directors have hiring contracts. Interims do not. That's the difference. They are at will employees without employment contracts. In terms of the process, the reason the LSB weighs in on the termination of a permanent GM is that the LSB weighed in on the, term, on the hiring of that same individual. This LSB did not do so. Um, and in fact, when this LSB did attempt to replace uh, a permanent hire, as as we say, this LSB registered an opinion. Um, in terms of the process, you can't apply one half of the bylaw and not apply the other half of the bylaw. The LSB's authorities relate to individuals that are hired by LSB search committee processes, and that's not the case here, and who have pending em employment contracts, which is also not the case here. So the bylaw really doesn't apply. I'm empathetic to the idea that this board would like more information. I think that's appropriate. I, it should be coming. Uh, but I'm not empathetic to the demand to basically haphazardly enforce one part of a bylaw and not the other. That's inappropriate. And again, this board had opportunities to evaluate, to recommend, and to participate in the hiring process of a permanent general manager. And this board took certain actions. And those actions are the reason that an interim GM position has continued for, I guess, just about two, two years. And I think this board needs, needs to take some responsibility for that situation. There are two more people on the list, Mark and Craig, and the chair would like to point out to my colleagues that in the agenda that we approved at the beginning of the meeting, we have arrived at the times for the next item. Uh, as the group can make the agenda elastic, but it's my duty to remind you. That's fine. Uh, Mark? Uh, very simply, the, uh, the bylaws exist. And the primary purpose for the bylaws is to give us order and gun, continuity and operations. Without regard for uh, Tracy's rather convoluted explanation, uh, it's undercut by the fact that, uh, as she points out, an action by this board maintain the interim position. Well, if it didn't have any action or capability on the interim position, how could it have done that? So obviously, her assessment of how the bylaws apply work does not hold water in this case. But underlying the entire philosophy, the entire basis for the local station's boards is provide local input into national operations. This is supposedly 
to keep the national board from demanding from on high how things are done with little or no understanding of how things are on the local level. This being a prime example of it. In this whole effort, it is mandatory, mandatory under the bylaws for the local station board to be involved without regard to status of interim or permanency. To at least be consulted at the minimum, if not fully involved at the maximum, as de defined in the bylaws. To assume the local station board can be just cut out and ignored is to grant national uh, authority where it is undeserved and unwanted. Thank you, Craig. Thank you. The bylaws make no distinction about interim versus permanent. None. And so to make such a distinction is gratuitous and I think disingenuous. Um, now the argument that Tracy raises that um, that you know that interim does apply here. Uh, well, she cites uh, the evaluation that this board did last year uh, as a basis for the proposed or threatened termination of the general manager. Uh, item C, under the specific duties of the board, says to prepare an annual written evaluation of the station's general manager. No distinction there about interim versus permanent. And this argument, I think, that Tracy raises is simply incoherent. You can't have it both ways. You can't cite the board's evaluation as the reason, as the justification for firing the general manager here, and then turn around and say, oh no, the board has no role to play in discussing or even being informed of this decision uh, because he's in the interim. It, again, that language does not exist. There's a, an important principle here, and, and, and the reason the local board exists is to play a role in the administration, the management, the direction, and the stability of the station. 